Hello, Ognin. Hello. Hello, The everybody. stage is yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's uh, great to be here. I've uh, been here from the start, and I am really appreciated this opportunity. So I'd like to start always with a story. So a long time ago, one uh, peasant went for the walk into the forest, and he came across an uh, interesting egg. It was so interesting that he decided to take it with home to the village. He put chicken to sit on it, and sometimes later, the egg hatched. Out of the egg, there was a baby bird. Although this baby bird was different than all the other chickens, Mama Chicken decided to keep him and to learn him how to eat corn and worms. Sometimes later, above the village, there was a huge shadow. And then the baby bird asked his mother, Mama, Mama, what is this? And she said, it's an eagle, my son. But just forget it and continue eating those corn. Like they said, my name is Ognjen Bagatin. Bagatin. I'm a CEO of Bagatin Clinic in, in Croatia consultant for more than 20 clinics across Europe on healthcare management and medical tourism, owner of the Entrepreneur uh, Magazine, entrepreneur, organizer of uh, Entrepreneur Mindset Conference, and co-organizer of EPIC Congress together with Cleveland Clinic. I want to talk to you about these three things. First, about Bagatin Clinic, just to have an overview then my journey to entrepreneurship, and then uh, tips for entrepreneurs, managers, and most important, leaders. Uh, our clinic is owned by three brothers. These are my two uh, brothers who are older. They're twins. This is Tomica, and this is Dinko. We are your beauty destination. We have four departments, cosmetic surgery, dermatology, and aesthetic medicine, cosmetology, and dentistry. How it all started, so it's a family business funded by our late father in 1995. In 2008, when I came to the clinic, we only had one employee. That was my brother Tomica. My other brother was working for public hospital. Now, we're one of the leading uh, regional institutions for plastic surgery, uh, aesthetic medicine, dermatology, and uh, dentistry. By Deloitte, we're one of the fastest uh, growing small and media companies in, uh, companies in the industry. In 2019, we came to 120 employees. We have three clinics. This is our flagship at Double Tree by Hilton Hotel. Where is our dental center, aesthetic medicine, dermatology, cosmetology. Under location is plastic surgery. And then our newest baby clinic is split in Hotel Dioclesian. So this is how our company grew. So from 2, 2008 to 120, 2019. Unfortunately, this year, COVID uh, hurt us a little bit, but we, uh, we will definitely continue our growth. Just look at the revenue. So from more than 30,000 euros yearly revenue in 2008, up to six and a half million euros last year. And our plan this year was eight million euros. Unfortunately, COVID came and we're probably gonna finish only with six. But this goal is for the next year now. We're internationally certified and accredited clinic. Uh, we cooperate with uh, uh, dis distributors and companies from all over the world with their reference center for this part of Europe or for Europe overall. We are very socially re responsible since we were a small company and now when we're all big, we support this five uh, association and we're very happy to do it every year. And this is our medical staff, our front office. Uh, people who provide amazing uh, uh, services to more than 30,000 clients from all over the world. But for them to do that, there's something 
that makes us special. And that is, we always work in our corporate culture uh, on great medical expertise and most of all, great hospitality and lifting the patient experience. So for our front office to provide amazing servers, we have a back office that supports them. So marketing team or communication team for, uh, with seven experts, call seven, seven experts for domestic and international uh, clients, HR departments consisting of four experts, one of them psychologists, Department of Medical Tourism, and logistics. So for front office to do their uh, job the best they can, these guys help them support it, which nobody sees. So 2008, we have one employee. Uh, only thing we had was uh, inherited vision of my father. He always talked about special hospital. Does anybody know what special hospital, specialty hospital is? Neither did I. But it was something big. So I made a plan. I said on this bicycle, and I said it will take me two to three years to get there, and I'll leave this project to my brothers, and I'll go do something else. Of course, nothing that I planned went how I planned it. So it was a lot of mistakes, a lot of falling, a lot of learning, but a lot of persistence. So we didn't yet make that hospital, but we're very close. To be an entre entrepreneur, you need to have vision. You need to have courage, persistence. You need to educate yourself all the time. And most of all, you need to have leadership. And then you need to combine it. But that's not enough as well. You need to do a lot of sacrifices. So first year, three years in our company, I worked for Zero Kuna. I worked three additional jobs all day after work and all weekends just to get by. But I read books, I learned, I planned, and most of all, I never give up. And that's why I'm here and I can share my story. So how to get from zero to hero in seven steps. So these are the steps and we'll go one by one. So first of all, and the most important thing is to have a vision. To have a vision means that you know where you're gonna be in five, 10, 15 years. And then how and why are you going to get there is your mission. Either if you're a company, you're a department, or you're individual. This is something you need to do for yourself. It's like having a goal and always looking at the goal and never lose sight, sight of it. So you don't go wild goose chasing somewhere else, here, there, nowhere. It's Having, like having a compass and map, like having a guidelines to your success. Because you can hit the target you can see. So we redefined our vision, mission, values three times since I'm in a company. Last year was the last time, and we did it with the whole leadership team. So we did vision, mission, values, and how will that uh, impact our corporate, corporate culture. But just to have this is just a starting point. What is very important for having a vision is to put some numbers. So this is something that we did 2013. When we had only 3 million kuna revenue, we said we want to have 2025 100 million kunas. We want to be number one clinic in the whole region. We want to attract 18,000 international patients to our clinic cum uh, cum cumulative and have two satellites on Croatian coast. We have one now. We would have two this year if Corona would, didn't happen. But if we didn't do this, would we be here where we are at this moment? What do you think? Of course not. 
So this is something that was driving us all along, especially me. Second, you have vision, you have mission, now you need to execute on it. So get things done is number one in every company. So for, you need to know where you're going, how you're going to get there, and then what you're going to do first, second, third, and what you're not, not going to do at all. That's called an action plan, popularly called strategy. So last year we redefined our strategy as well. And uh, we have four pillars that uh, it stands on. But just to have this, is just something that you have on a paper or a slide. You need to execute on it all the time. You need to measure something. You need to place KPIs to do it, either if you're a small company or a large company. Because to have key perform in indicators means that you can measure something. What gets measured, that gets done. What gets measured can get improved. So this is something that we showed to the whole company in 2019. So to do our goals, we need to bring, attract 7,000 new clients uh, in Zagreb, 1,000 in Split, and bring 1,000 international patients. Then you have, have uh, a great internal uh, reviews and bring 33% uh, from 2018 to 2019. And if we do all this, we'll do our revenue goal. We have more than 300 KPIs in our company. This is just one of them. So waiting time in our reception. We uh, measure this on every location, and uh, our goal is to be, uh, keep it under 10%. Imagine you'd put this in public hospital. How much the service will be better? And we do a lot of KPIs for new services, strike rate in call center, uh, and so on. So always measure, always improve. Third step is always grow your people. If you are only person in your company, grow yourself. Why? Because HR rocks. It's the most important thing. Because people are your greatest strengths. People are only are increasing value with time. Infrastructure, equipment, everything else loses value. Only human capital increases. And people make a culture. And great culture is difference between great and mediocre companies. And to share how to uh, grow your culture, how to grow your people, I'll share a story about the Chinese bamboo tree. Does anybody know this story? You want to share? I'm just kidding. Uh, so for Chinese bamboo tree to grow, you need to have a lot of things going on. A fertile soil, a lot of water, a lot of heat, and sun. And when you place seed of Chinese bamboo tree in the fertile soil, you put water, heat, and sun. For first year, nothing happens. But then you continue doing this. Second, third, fourth year, still nothing. No visible signs of growth. What happens then? Some of us uh, start to doubt themselves. Some even quit, but then, in fifth year, miracle happens. In just six weeks, a Chinese bamboo tree grows 25 meters in height. But think about it. Does it really grow 25 meters in six weeks, or there was going on, something go, going on all this time before? Our little Chinese bamboo tree was growing, but it was growing underground, developing a, a strong root system to support that future growth. And this is something you need to do in your companies. You need to invest in your people, invest in your human capital, and you'll see how it can grow big. How we do it in our clinic, 
So we focus on educating, improving our management by weekly meetings and weekly uh, education, then our doctors, doctor development, and then the whole uh, institution organization together through our platform, Bagatina Academy, where we uh, gather once a month, every month, when it was possible offline. Now we do it online. And we gather 40, 50 outside uh, coaches that work on our team. And because of that, we continuously get the best talents for our business, for our organization. It's important to develop your people, but it's more developed that start with yourself. Because if you don't develop yourself and learn, your people won't learn as well. This is something that I suggest, I suggest to everybody. So every year I uh, enroll in one year program for sales, marketing, HR, I don't know what. MBA, who has an MBA here? Get it. This is something that helped me understand business better. Then go and uh, do workshop for leadership skills, get a coach. I had a coach for four years. He helped me a lot. Do a solve skills workshops. If you don't have time, go on YouTube, type soft skills, educate yourself, read books, listen to audio books. I read or listen to more than 55, 60 books every year. In my Audible, for the last five years, it says that at out of 60 months, I spent three months listening to books about entrepreneurship, leadership, marketing, management, sales, and whatnot. I use all the garbage time I have to listen to those books to get better in what I do. I suggest you do it as well. And with experience and mistakes, you get better and better. And something that I always suggest, get a mentor or be a mentor. Because when one teaches the other, they both learn. And for the last, give presentations, give talks. I was a very poor public speaker eight, nine years ago, very poor. It was very sad, I would say. But I worked on that. I listened books, I read books, and I presented all the time. This is something that will uh, help you improve. Fourth step, you need to be always accounting and finance focused. So you don't make some big mistakes. So I had uh, my fair, fair share of mistakes. Uh, so it says here more than 7 million kuna. I would say it's more than 12, but 7 is my lucky number, so I like to keep it here. Uh, so this is my second MBA. This is mistakes I made since I'm running this company. But if uh, I didn't do these mistakes, I wouldn't be, and our company wouldn't be where it is. So we are proactively going into projects, new things, optimization, so we can grow. So these are s just some of our, our mistakes I did. This is five out of a million, but this is a reason why we're here. And you need to know that success comes after you survive all your mistakes. A couple of days ago, in uh, one show, Somebody from the government say, you shouldn't do mistakes. He, he should get fired. You need to do a million mistakes, but don't repeat them. Try not to repeat them. You repeat them. But be persistent, have a vision, and do mistakes, and do them fast and a lot. Five is train and get in shape your operation. Always find a way how to do, do it cheaper, better, more productive. And uh, have a courage to recognize this threat. This is something that is killing 
a lot of organization. We always did, this, did it this way. So always try to, to improve, to do things better. And to share with you how to do it and to explain why, I will tell you the story about five monkeys. So who, has this, who knows the story? You want to come? OK, next time, prepare. So uh, scientists uh, have put in a cage five monkeys. They put a letter. And on top of the ladder, they put a banana, bananas. And one monkey went to get a banana. He took a banana, opened it, started to eat it, eat it. And other four monkeys were splashed with ice cold water. Second day came. They put a ladder, put a banana. The same monkey went upstairs. He took a banana. He took a bite. Others were splashed with ice cold water. The third day came. They put a letter, they put a banana. What happened? He tried to go upstairs. What did the others do? They beat him up. Fourth day, same thing happened. Fifth day, nobody goes for the bananas. So scientists said, what are we going to do now? They uh, replaced an uh, old monkey with new monkey who never experienced nothing. They put a letter, they put a banana. He went to get a banana. They beat him up. And they did it until they changed all the old monkeys with new monkeys who never experienced that ice cold water. And nobody went to get banana. When somebody went to get the banana, they beat him up. This is something that's happening not just in public institu institution, everywhere. And you need to uh, always see is there any better, faster, cheaper, more productive way to do it. Not to be too busy to make improvements. One of our values is continuous improvement just because of this. So always improve at least 1% every week. Always try to find a way how to optimize something, especially in digital field. So what we do in digital, I will share a little bit later. But we uh, want to put a focus from King the doctor to King the patient. And to do it, we need to improve their patient experience. How do we do it? In three cases, I'll be quick. Uh, so uh, we implemented and uh, developed our own med CRM. So customer relationship management system, replaced it with the old one which we had uh, was Zoho. Uh, we had a Google Calendar, and we took notes in the Zoho. Nothing was interconnected. So uh, to get an appointment, it took two, three, four minutes for a call center, which took too, too long. And we have 40 uh, operating rooms and exam rooms, 70 devices, 45 people working in this uh, room. And you need to find, call center needs to find a uh, place for them. It was very difficult. That's why we implemented a new med CRM, which is interconnected with CRM. Uh, everything is in one system. They have AI in, in uh, ordering. So call center gets uh, first available uh, uh, schedule and so on. And we have all the patient journey inside that system. It took us 26 months to develop it. But now it's uh, amazing. Second case is that we're working on is the digital clinic. So we want to do, uh, uh, want to have paperless clinic. Every time you, you come into the hospital or clinic, you need to uh, have a consent form or your information and you sign it. Somebody needs to type it in. Uh, CRM or archive, archive it. Took too much time. So what we uh, are working on, you, uh, every patient will, will have a tablet and uh, read, sign, and automatically uh, put in a CRM and into archive. And we, it will be GDPR compliant. Why is this important? 
we lose 30 minutes every uh, uh, nurse to copy it in med CRM in our high habit. Times 30 nurses, 15 hours a day, 300 a month, 360 a year. And we'll replace it like this. And they will focus more on patient experience. And third, this is more focused on our core business. So how we do consultation for aesthetic surgery in our clinic. Uh, before you came to our clinic, doctor would take a photo, uh, was writing on a picture to, to help you imagine how you're gonna look after. So what patient expected and what doctor knows he can get wasn't always communicating. So that's why we get uh, amazing devices, Vectra XT, uh, uh, for simulation on consultation, how you're gonna look after. So the doctor and the patient sees the same picture before operation starts. And you can have a uh, follow-up later to see if simulation and end result match. But this helped increase patient experience and satisfaction a lot. We invested 30 minutes more for a consultation, but we have 80% less claims and better patient experience. We also uh, are implementing online consultation a lot, especially uh, with Corona started and working on our own product that, that will be integrated with our CRM. Sixth step is invest in your brand. Invest in your communication, in your marketing. And everything you do or you don't do is helping or hurting your brand. This is something, uh, some of the things that, that we do and everything counts. Especially in digital space. A lot of acti activities. So are you doing the same or you're not being active enough? The most important ingredient of your brand is your team. So how they walk, talk, behave, talk to each other, talk to your patients, it shows something about your brand, about your culture. So always think about this. So are you proactively uh, working on getting different awards or are you just sitting and waiting that somebody will uh, uh, award you with something. We're proactively applying everywhere so we can show how great our team is. And also what's great, cooperate with better than yourself. So we're, we worked two years uh, to get European Patient Experience and Innovation Congress with Cleveland Clinic in Croatia. Unfortunately, it was canceled but we did a great platform for our future growth. So always think big. Also, try to be innovative, creative. These three ladies are our own clients who trust us so much that they said yes to the being in our commercial. This is something you need to do. Communicate great with your clients. This is a very important number. So if this number wasn't here, that's 15%. That's 15% of our revenue that we reinvest in, in communication, marketing, advertising. If we didn't do this, we wouldn't be growing like we grew so far. Most of our budget is in digital. So mostly Google, Facebook, now Instagram, of course and we invested a lot of money into our brand, into our database. And now we're actively working on keeping, how to, acquiring new and keeping our old clients. And if you do all this, then you grow 80% in revenue from 2018 to 2019 with your international patients. We had patients from 52 countries of the world visiting our clinic last year. It was 
first two months we had 42. This is, so just keep on keeping on. And the more important, the important uh, message I want to share is there's nothing without leadership. How we teach people in our organization is through example and uh, by designing uh, a lead by design system. First is fundamental of everything. It's something you don't see in media often. So you can say something to others and you not doing it. So just imagine, I gather all of you and I say there's no uh, uh, mobile phones allowed in this conference. And somebody calls me, I pick it up and I talk for 30 minutes. What will you do later? The same thing. You need to walk the talk. And when you have that in order, then you build a system where leaders create leaders, not followers. If somebody wants to improve in his, his career, he needs to teach somebody else to replace him. All these things, is my department, organization will survive if I'm out of the game, if I'm sick, if I'm on vacation. That's something you need to think about. That's what leaders do. When are the leaders needed? Crisis or prosperity? What do you think? Always. They're always needed. But different type of leadership. How, how do they look? How high are they? What's their weight? What's the color of, this, uh, of uh, hair? Eyes? Skin? We can find them in sport. We can find them in politics. We can find them in business. Leaders are everywhere. Just need to find them. And also, who has the uh, children here? Who has the children? All mothers and fathers are leaders. And you can imagine, so you're ordering your child to do something and you're doing something completely uh, different. What will they do? They don't listen to you. They only see what you do. Are leaders bro born or are they created? When, they, when you got uh, your child, the doctor said, congratulations, there's a leader for you. Uh, no. Peter Drucker said, there are natural born leaders, but in seven billion uh, people, only few of them. So leaders are being cre created by developing the cell. There's no chromosome for leadership, and they're being developed by continuous improvement, learning, and learning on mistakes. So do mistakes a lot. Some of the obstacles, uh, obstacles laziness, excuses, shifting responsibility to others. He did it, not me. And not accepting criticism and feedback. There's a precondition to productivity. So Stephen Covey in Seven Habits of Highly Successful People said being pro proactive is taking uh, responsibility for your life. So you're responsible for everything that happens to you. Because you can always do or not do something that you, uh, to have something done or not done. It's your responsibility. When you shift responsibility to somebody else, show me the finger, three fingers are pointed at you. You're always responsible. Don't have excuses on your mom, dad, grandpa, wife, husband, girl, boy, whatever. Take responsibility for your life. 
this is difference between boss and leader. Sometimes boss is needed, of course, but we need to improve our leadership skills as well. So leader develops people, boss uses them. Leaders help, boss criticize. Leaders say we, boss say I did this. Leader shows how it's done and boss know how it's done. Leader always says plan B, C, D, E, F, G, what not, and boss criticize you after the plan A. Leader asks, boss commands, leader say let's go, and boss say go. So is being leader hard or easy? Is it hard or easy? It's hard. It's like being on Big Brother. Everybody's watching you. It's a habit. A lot of people want to be a leader, but then they see it's hard and they quit. How do you start? I'll give you one hint. Work in yourself. Educate yourself. Get a mentor, a coach. Use uh, all your books, podcasts, what's not? What else? What else? This is the key. So you can master those skills by reading books, listen to audible podcasts, uh, getting, going to worship, uh, mentorship, coaching. This is some of the people that I listen and I follow. And you need to make a decision. What are you going to do after this leap summit? Uh, summit? You're just going to continue doing what you did before, or you're going to get at least one thing going on for you. And to continue the story from the beginning, one day in the village, there was a biolog biologist going through, and he said to peasant, what is this baby eagle doing in your backyard? And the, the peasant said, it's not a baby eagle. And then biologists took him by the hand. They went to the mountain, came to the cliff. He took the baby eagle and threw him in the air. First, he would start falling. Then slowly opening his wings and starting waving. And finally, he spread his wings and lifted in a high, high in the sky. I don't know when you were spread your wings, when you start waving with them, how high you gonna fly, but I know that one day, maybe starting today, you will be the leaders this Europe, this world wants you to be. So don't forget this message, the measure of the man is not what he created for himself, but what he gave to others. Thank you very much.